Well, today is the coldest day of the winter so far. And it's the first properly cold day that this heat pump has been running. We've had low temperatures in the early morning of about minus 10 and a half degrees. And during the middle of the day, we've had no more than minus six degrees as the temperature. So in this video, we are gonna be reviewing the heat pump performance for this particular day and how well it couples with our solar power. Well, here is the coldest day in question, the 4th of January. And as you can see, coldest temperature today so far, minus 10 and a half degrees Celsius. And the mean temperature from midnight until just after six o'clock today, minus seven and a half degrees Celsius. Very impressive. You can see the maximum temperature, it was about minus five and a half, minus five degrees. Very, uh, so it's been very cold during the middle part of the day. All the while, you can see that the temperature has climbed from 19.2 degrees Celsius and it has uh, reached about 21 degrees uh, quite early in the day, actually. Uh, it seems to reach that temperature much earlier than it does on uh, milder days. And typically what we do is we switch the heat pump off from eight o'clock until it drops down to 20 degrees and then it switches itself back on again. And yeah, it's done a very good job in terms of maintaining comfort. Now, this is uh, interesting. You can see there's a lot of energy which is needed to bring the leaving water temperature up to the set point. If your radiators are at, are at room temperature, there's a lot of energy that needs to be put into the system. And it can take about an hour to get the temperature up to set point level. But once it's at set point level, it only dips down here when the heat pump goes into defrost cycle. Now, for those people who haven't seen my defrost cycles, I haven't seen it myself, but I have heard it. You, you get this low rumbling sound coming from the cupboard about, as you can see, once an hour uh, during the cold part of the day. But uh, in the uh, warmer part of the day, it's about once every hour and a half. And a lot of the interval depends on the relative humidity. We'll talk about that and we'll look at yesterday as an example of what that means. All told, you can see that when it comes to bringing the temperature up, we will have a heat pump output, which is about 2.8 kilowatts in terms of consumption. And that re uh, relates to a uh, and an actual power production of about 5.8 kilowatts. So all told, you're talking about a coefficient of performance of around about two. And in steady state operations, wherever you get them, uh, the coefficient of performance tends to improve before you get the next defrost cycle. So we're getting a coefficient of performance at, uh, at minus 10 degrees of about two to 2.2. So that's very impressive indeed and uh, much better than published performance figures by about 0.6. So we should be getting a COP of about 1.6 at this temperature. Now, if we look at yesterday as an example, here is a, a very interesting example. Often we will get very frequent cycling uh, during the uh, freezing periods uh, when it comes to defrost cycling. But this evening was quite exceptional. It was getting down to about minus two and a half degrees and we didn't get too many defrost cycles. Why is that? Well, when you get lots of fresh snow, fresh snow acts as a desiccant and it sucks out a lot of moisture from the atmosphere, which basically means there's a lot less condensation to be had on the cooling fins of the heat pump. So you don't need this defrost cycle quite so uh, frequently. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of frost on the uh, condensers and frequently that ice will be removed uh, through what's known as a defrost cycle. So what happens is that there's a reversing valve in here, which uh, switches and then it pumps hot refrigerant through the uh, evaporator coil in reverse. And that will allow the, water, the ice to melt away and that will melt down to the bottom. 
Now, I will look at heat pump history. It tends to log yesterday's data, so we don't have data for the 4th of January, but you can see that on the 2nd of January, that's our highest ever consumption, 30 kilowatt hours. What I can tell you is uh, when we go on to solar edge monitoring, and as you can see, from midnight until 5.30, we were on the cheap overnight rate, which was uh, seven pence per kilowatt hour. Then from 5.30 in the morning until about 9.45, we were on battery power and we drained the battery quite quickly here. But as you can see here, we were getting a good day's worth of production, about 5.8 kilowatt hours of electricity. And that helped supply most of our power during the daytime. And it's really only once we get to about quarter past two that we start to depend on expensive electricity all the way through until half past 11 tonight. So that is a typical anatomy in terms of power production and power consumption for my house. And that's uh, very impressive. 38.5 kilowatt hours. Uh, that is for not just for running the heat pump, but also running the house as well. Typically about uh, seven or eight kilowatt hours will be used for household loads. I'm not charging up the car at all today. Now we've got about a week's worth of cold weather coming up. Uh, not probably not as cold as uh, it was last night, but it's still going to be pretty cold. So my next video about the heat pump performance will be the one year review at the end of February. So in the meantime, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you again very soon.